So thanks for uh, taking the time. Hopefully I'm not uh, catching you at a weird time right now. No, you're not. I mean, every, every time is a weird time, I guess, for everybody, right? Yeah, yeah, no worries. So recently, kind of uh, the reissue, Failure, uh, Sculptures, but you got uh, two acoustic songs on it. Now, uh, what's been kind of like uh, going on since you saw the release of those uh, two acoustic songs? Because kind of, uh, I, I don't know, when I listen to acoustic songs, it, it seems to bring on more of that personal meaning to it without like the outside band. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, I, I had, you know, some friends of mine say like, like, oh, wow, like I, you know, I didn't realize like how much I love that song. Like, you know, they liked it before, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, seeing a woman without makeup or something and then you, you really love her, you know, it's like that. It's like, you know, that you really love something without the kind of accoutrement or, or you know, aesthetic uh, ornamentation of it. Yeah, definitely that stripped down feel, taking away, like you said, all the glamour for sure. Yeah. So t take me kind of through uh, the, the writing process, because I got to imagine some of these are so personal. Is it one of those that this kind of happens organically, or is there something that's like spur of the moment, something hits you and you pick up that pen and start writing? Yeah, well, it's it, there's kind of like two methods, which I not necessarily battle with, but like, I know I can sit down and write a song and I know the, you know, A, B, A, A, B, B rhyme schemes. And like, you know, like I know how to rhyme, like, you know, rhyme and what words are pretty. And, and um, I can do that all the time if I want to, but for some songs, um, I don't know, it's weird. It's like, it comes from someplace else. And that sounds kind of like, like I'm trying to, you know, sound like all spiritual and, and bizarre, but um, it does. It feels like it sort of just comes from like God or or some unknown type of place. And and um, I I heard uh, Philip Glass. He's a composer, and he said that he doesn't compose anything. He said that music are, are like these like underground rivers that always exist, and he just kind of digs them up and and finds them. So it it does feel that way. It's like um, they're kind of always there. It's almost just like you just gotta grab them out of the sky or something. So it's pretty trippy. With, with, with that said, do you ever have something that's maybe like you started 10 years ago and it's like five years later and then three years later and so forth and you kind of get the final touches on it? Has that kind of happened with you at all? Um, not really. I mean, like some of the songs on that record I wrote like the day that I recorded them. So it's just sort of, you just, you sort of just have to like put yourself in the mindset and just being like, like open to like receive it and stuff. It's like a weird, like, it's like a mood you have to get into. I can't quite explain what it is, but there's times where, you know, I'll go a year and I won't write a song at all. But then if I get into that m mode um, of like receiving them, it's like, it, it comes like really quickly and you can't really it's almost like a, it's like a, like a factory line, you know, like you gotta just like, shit, I keep, you know, you gotta like keep up with it and, and things like that. So um, it is, it's, it's bizarre. It's like, I'm in complete control of it yet. Sometimes I feel like I'm not. And it's, uh, and some songs take five minutes, you know, right when I wake up, like, boom, there's a song in five minutes. And then it's kind of hard to explain, I suppose. So it's not like one of those, like you're, you're looking for that, that hook. It's, it's really what's personal to you and you hope other people attach to it. Yeah, totally. And and there is like, you know, not, I don't mean to make it seem just so like esoteric and like metaphysical or something, but there there is like the, the moment you go like, okay, this is a chorus and you're like, let's make it melodically catchy so people like it because you can't just go, you know, like, you know, I'm not a caveman, you know, like you can't just go rambling you know, like, you know, otherwise, you, you know, what would music and poetry be? There is a form. There is a form. Like, um, it's almost like disappointingly that there is a form, but there has to be. So a chorus, um, I know um, I have to exist within those rules of melody to make it catchy sometimes. 
Yeah, for sure. So it's been a, a long like time between albums and I know now you're you're working on uh, the EP. Is it already kind of near the final stages of it or where where, where yeah. are you at with it? It's done. It comes out April 16th. Okay. And then yeah. from that EP, are, are there already plans for the next album or do we have those several years wait for your next one? Oh, I know, right? I mean, well, the next out, like the full length album is pretty much done. It's not like recorded, but it's, I have, I have enough songs. So that's cool. Um, but like a, a, a lot of like this, the sort of like scheduling stuff, a lot of that stuff doesn't have anything to do with me, weirdly, because, yeah. um, yeah, not to sound like, you know, some like helpless martyr, but I'm like, I can just make the songs because I don't even know, I don't know how to put out a record or, you know what I mean? And I don't it, like, I don't know like where labels even get their money. It's, I'm just like, I don't even, I don't, I, I, if I thought about that stuff, I'd have a pretty hard time. So it's like, um, I, I mean, I know for like when we did Lesser Oceans, it was like, oh, it's coming out in like, you know, August of 2013. They're like, well, actually April of 2014. And I'm just, I'm like, why? I don't know. Like, who knows why? But but it's, to that said, you, you'd be ready to go with the next album and maybe even another album after that a year later, but it's kind of yeah. on the industry on when they'd be able to put it out. Exactly. I could, I, I would love to exist a little bit more prolifically, um, but it's, uh, it's just not up to me. But I, you know, I suppose the way that <clears throat> media has changed, I probably could just you know, release a record to Spotify like every month, but I don't know. I kind of like romanticize like the old model. I don't want to be one of those like people that just like, I just put out my own stuff and uh, people tell me, you know, like that's cool, but I'm like, I don't know. I, I sort of like to just write songs and then have people do their job too. Cause it's like, that's almost like, to me, it's like, you know, when they put those like self checkout lines in grocery stores, it's like, you don't want to take away people's jobs. It's like, yeah. they have a job, I have a job. Let's just like know our role and like keep it fucking classic, I think. But what about, it, it, like you mentioned something like putting it out, Spotify or anything. What about kind of the way you write is very poetic in its sense. What about even doing something like spoken word? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to write a book. I think I have like three to 400 pages of a book. I'm like, getting pretty close um i write poetry like all the time i love writing that's i like writing more than i like music so um i mostly just put music on top of it because you know i have to but um i uh i, I do i do like that that's a good idea spoken word yeah i would i would love to release a book of poetry or or do something like that and it's interesting you say that because um niall marr a friend of mine, his father, Johnny Mars and the Smiths, the, the, you know, great band. But he asked me to do a song with him. And I just was like, you know what, man, I'm not, I just wasn't hearing any music. So I wrote, I wrote this like long poem and I just, I read it over the song. So you're not, you're not off base there. Yeah, because it's definitely, I mean, a lot of musicians, not, not all of musicians seem to have that knack where it's not even, they need to find that rhyming word. I mean, Rhymes is just one aspect of poetry. I mean, poetry mm. has a different internal meaning to everybody. It's and, and that's what I think really uh, cool in the way that you write. It's almost like stylistically, like somebody's going to take your art form in a different context. Uh, I mean, it's kind of the beauty of the way that you write. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I I agree. Um, what is it like the, uh, the the Pritchard scale, where there's like rules to poetry. It's, it's like in that movie, uh, The Dead Poet Society. Yep. It's it's like that. So like that stuff is is insane. And I mean, I mean, I know there's a there's like a Richard Brodigan poem. I'm certainly paraphrasing, but he, there's a poem where he's like, you know, uh, I went into her apartment. There was a bike in the corner, and it's done. And I was like, that's fucking amazing. Like it's not, but it's just like in the context of it being him and you knowing his brain and just that he just did that didn't rhyme wasn't long wasn't pretty it was just like a, a flash so i i dig that i like um 
to stuff that you know. can get you thinking. Yeah, yeah, because you're kind of like, is this bad? Is this good? But you're like, how dare he just write that? And so it's like, but it doesn't, it does, it, it starts an internal dialogue in your head. And then you have, you know, Pablo Neruda, like, you know, the love sonnets where you read those and you're like, you're crying and you're like, is, but is that better than that? Like, I don't know. Is that kind of like uh, the way, like, you hope your music is personified to y- the fans, really people out there where they get that deeper meaning at, upon hearing it? Or is it just, it's like your own personal message and how somebody's going to do it, so be it. But to you, it's what's important to you. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but but that's kind of the weird thing is because <clears throat> it's like, I feel like any art that's made like specifically to people, like what even is that? Like, you know, that's like a, like a a surgeon or like a chef or something. It's like when it's like a direct, I'm helping you, or that would be like a, an instructional manual, like anything, like you read, like, you know, just like a classic book, like on the road by Jack Kerouac, like he wrote cause he was on the road. He wasn't being like, I really want, I want to really tell people like, you know, this is what it's like to be on the road. It's, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know that if anyone's doing it directly to give a message to people, I feel like that seems to me to be kind of like almost manipulative. Yeah. Unless, unless you have like a political thing when there's a band, like, like, you know, Rage Against the Machine or like Woody Guthrie, it's like, they're trying to be like, Hey, but, other than that, man, I think it's it all is pretty personal. But sort of the irony of uh, things being personal is that none of us are really unique. You know, we I mean, we have like scales of intelligence and like backstories and, you know, gender and like, you know, geographical locations. But it's like chances are like when you, anybody, when you see a sunset, you're going to be like, feel the same kind of way. So we're not really unique. Different place, different time. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, be, being somebody that definitely makes a pre- presence with themselves, not just musically, but I mean, physically, your uh, outward appearance, do you think that, unfortunately, people have a tendency to hold too much to face values? Is that like a pun on the face tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever way you want to take it, but I mean, yeah. Like, Unfortunately, that, that society, I mean, people are going to walk by. I mean, unfortunately, people wouldn't necessarily say, oh, this guy all tied it up. He might be of this type of creed and not really see, like, the man behind the music because of what they see on outward appearance. Yeah, it, it's, it is pretty weird for sure. It's like it either works for me or against me because, like, the juxtaposition is, like, kind of alluring. But in order for juxtaposition to be known, you have to go from one side to the other. Otherwise, it's just, it's not juxtaposition. It's just that guy's got tattoos. But when they hear the music, they're like, that's weird. I wouldn't expect that. Um, so it's, it, it has been, it's, it really has honestly worked for and against me. Um, and the ways that it works against me, I wouldn't really, it's, it's kind of confusing stuff. Like, um, you know, sometimes someone will, like, some random kid will DM me on Instagram and be like, like, what the fuck did you do to your face, loser? And I'm just like, like, you know, like, wh- but then I think to myself, I'm like, why are you so upset? Like, are, like, are you okay? Like, what's wrong with you? Because, like, why would you take the time to, to tell me that when it's like, you, you know, I, I just don't understand it. It's almost like it brings out something in other people. And it's kind of weird. Not that I'm trying to do that or whatever, but like I've just noticed that for myself. It's just like um, it, it, it's and the, and the real funny thing is, if I didn't have you know any tattoos, there'd be some other thing, be some other problem, you know, like oh he looks like a pussy or something like that. It's people are pretty mean all the time about everybody and everything. Someone's you know a supermodel, like, oh, they're vapid, like, oh, she's too beautiful, she's not smart, you know, and then, like, someone's, like, fat, like, oh, they're too fat, and someone's, like, fit, it's, like, oh, they're, you know, they're just, like, uh, addicted to, like, working out, it's, like, you'll never win, ever, so that's why I'm just, like, 
like like fuck it fuck them all i just i do exactly what i want to do all the time you and that's it yeah <laughs> that's it yeah and, and uh, obviously, pandemics changed the world with everything going on and stuff. And I mean, has there already been like plans to tour, or is it stuff is really still on hold? Mm. Man, it's <clears throat> it's so confusing to me because I feel like I'll hear like, uh, okay, you can like sit in a restaurant this week, and then next week you can't. So just at least in California, I'm in mean, California, it's been pretty, uh, I don't even know, like schizophrenic almost. Like it's just, I don't know what's going on. I really don't know. Um, everyone's getting vaccines and then they're like, and then people get vaccines. They're like, oh, I'm so sick. And then people are getting tested and they're like, they don't have it. Or they're like, they did, but they didn't know. It's like, it's a giant fucking mess to me i don't i don't quite understand it at all um so i don't know man. i mean maybe you know maybe they'll say everyone can tour but then a month later they'll say you can't never tour again i don't i don't really know for me again it's like kind of like that's the beauty of having that sort of power structure above me so when my manager texts me and he says hey you want to go on this tour I'll, I'll say yeah but as far as the pandemic goes um that's been really inconsistent, I think, as far as like what's allowed, what's not allowed, and it kind of changes. So it's hard. Yeah, for sure. And when, when you go on tour, are you going to go with uh, your buddy Macklemore or? Uh, probably not, man. Um, he's, he's got a whole other thing going. It's like we, we did the song and, and we're friends, but it's like. Two different extremes. He, yeah, I mean, he's like literally like in a mansion right now with like millions of dollars <laughs> i don't think that he wants to go like sit like on a stool next to me and like sing sad songs for like you know 200 kids or something probably not his uh <laughs> ideal saturday <laughs> so uh, what what else is uh coming up for you uh down the road i mean mentions about uh, there's a lot of possibilities but there it's hard to give definitive answers obviously with the industry but yourself are, are you doing any uh, art projects or getting into acting i think i heard a long time ago you were interested so uh, yeah. what, what else is in the fold maybe um i'm gonna do i'm working on some stuff it's kind of not like top secret but i'm working on some stuff with uh, the jack kerouac estate which is cool um the, the, the author of you know jack kerouac obviously like you ever heard of him he's like you know what i'm saying um vaguely, vaguely. but no He's uh he has some unreleased stuff and we want to put out um well his estate wants to put out the uh, you know they want to put out some of it um so I'm writing songs with it uh like a you know he he's someone's gonna you know read the book and then I'm gonna put have songs on the other side of the vinyl or we're just kind of tossing around ideas and probably you know doing like a live recording in like the Big Sur or a uh, cabin or, or you know maybe his house in Florida like. We're doing something like that. So it's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's where my mind is right now. And I've just been writing a ton of uh, poems, which is, yeah. I don't know why. So I'm just in the, I'm in the writing, writing. Like I just, I don't know. That's my thing right now. Yeah, you think if there is anything that you've done or maybe in the process of doing down the road, just kind of a fun question. I could easily see one of your tracks being featured in a movie it, if yeah. there's a movie that was already out or maybe something that you know is coming down the pipeline what what would be like that perfect one to introduce your track to a movie that's already out uh, already um, out or you know that's coming down the pipeline maybe man i mean you know what's so cool about that is like like elliot smith and goodwill hunting yep that like made the movie so I, I mean that's a great because that made you know that made his career and like his relationship with Gus Van Zandt and stuff so it would of course be some sort of you know that type of movie um, Finding Forrester and yeah exactly exactly something like that I don't even know if they I mean the only good new movie that I've seen was um 
uh, Captain Fantastic. Oh yeah, with, with the Viggo Mortensen. I like that. I watched actually just watched that last night, and I was like, man, I wish my songs were in this movie. It would have been great because it's like Pacific Northwest, and like we kind of like have the same vibe, like visually. I was like, is that me? I thought that was me in the movie the whole time. So. <laughs> That that would have been cool, but something like that, you know. Not I, I mean, if they want to put failure sculptures in like Die Hard Seven, that'd probably be just funny, like contrastual. <laughs> you know, yeah, what I mean? with, with the rape they're going, who knows? It's going to be uh, Die Hard with him walking out in a cane, I and mean, then you're seeing the background. <laughs> yeah, the the final Die Hard, he's actually just dead. <laughs> yeah, it's just Bruce well, lives in the coffin. Kind of like what they do with uh, Wolverine and did Logan. Maybe, maybe oh, yeah. like, like that. You just see it kind of dwindling down. <laughs> yeah. That movie was crazy, Logan. That was like, because because when I was a kid, I, lo I loved the X-Men and stuff like that. So I don't really watch those types of movies. Like, like, like I do like secretly, you know? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I, I want to act like I'm like intellectual. But like when Logan came out, I was like, oh, cool. I was really excited. And I watched it and I was like, this is like a sad movie. Oh yeah, for sure. There was like, I was like, this isn't a fucking comic book movie. This is like, what is this? It's so sad. Yeah. Good though. <clears throat> yeah, Hugh Jackman's amazing. Hey, well, I I really appreciate the time. If there's anything you'd like to add for fans or people that haven't got a chance to uh, check out your music yet, what would you like to tell them? Um, I'm I'm doing my best, and I love it, and I'm just trying to make something pretty, basically. Um. So, and I, I think that uh, a lot of people are doing a lot of fucked up things. So I'm just trying to make something pretty, which is, uh, that's about all I can do. I can't offer much more than that. Um, but uh, yeah, re-release is out there. And then uh, the new EP, I think is April 16th. And it's my favorite music I've ever made. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, and then, yeah, and then all my stuff is on all the places where things are. And it's all just Fences music, I believe. Just one one word, no space. Awesome. Well, hey, really appreciate your time. And uh, look, look forward to seeing uh, your music in Die Hard 7. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Take it easy. Bye. -bye.